They're secretive. They're mysterious. Worst of all, they're lethal. The mere mention of their name is enough to make people tremble with fear. Not even Google can tell you or show you much about them. But who are they? The most sinister hitman Colombia has ever seen. Los Priscos. The infamous gang of hitmen that had struck fear into the hearts of Colombians for years. And while it was Escobar who was the main man behind the whole story, you won't believe the role that Los Priscos played in his success. Sit back and prepare to be captivated by the story of Los Priscos. It's as fascinating as it is chilling. Inside the World of Los Priscos The sound of gunfire echoed through the streets of Medellin as Los Priscos carried out another hit on behalf of their boss, Pablo Escobar. This time, political leader Luis Carlos Galán was the victim. And for Los Priscos, this was just another day at the office. But who were these men? And how did they become such feared and ruthless killers? The infamous squad was named after the four Prisco Lopera brothers, Armando Alberto, Aeneas, Jose Rodolfo, and David Ricardo. But the Prisco's family's ties to the Medellin cartel went even deeper than that. You see, the Prisco family was no stranger to the world of organized crime. In fact, their fifth brother was Conrado Antonio. And maybe you don't know him, so let me tell you. He was a respected doctor in the community who even served as Pablo Escobar's personal physician. But when Conrado's loyalty to the cartel was called into question, it proved fatal. He was kidnapped and murdered on the orders of Escobar himself, leaving a deep scar on the Prisco family. However, Pablo Escobar wouldn't just kill Conrado. No, he would also kill another member of the Prisco family. Edgar de Jesus Potero Prisco, a first cousin to the brothers, was also killed. And you'd think this would be the end for Los Prisco's association with Pablo Escobar. But the Prisco brothers were no ordinary henchmen. They continued to carry out horrific acts in their name. So how did the remaining Prisco brothers end up working for the same man who killed their own flesh and blood? The answer lies in the brutal reality of life in Medellin at the time. With poverty and violence rampant, many young men saw joining a gang or cartel as their only way out. And you may be wondering how Los Priscos came to be. The truth is, their story is nothing short of dark and sinister. You see, Los Priscos were mostly recruited at a young age, from the poorest neighborhoods of Medellin, Colombia. Many of them had little formal education, and most came from broken homes or were orphaned. And in case you're wondering who was in charge of recruiting these young men, allow us to introduce you to one of the most ruthless organizations that ever existed, the Medellin Cartel. This cartel was a well-known Colombian drug trafficking organization that operated during the 1970s and 80s. It was founded by Pablo Escobar, who had a whole team working under him. There was Jose Gonzalo Rodriguez Gacha, known as El Mexicano, a ruthless enforcer who helped build the cartel's empire. Another prominent figure was Carlos Letter, a German-Colombian drug trafficker who played a pivotal role in the cartel's cocaine smuggling operations. The cartel was known for its ruthless tactics and willingness to use violence to maintain its power and protect its interests. It was responsible for countless murders, bombings, and acts of terrorism throughout Colombia and beyond. So how exactly did Los Priscos fit into this whole scenario? It's no surprise that Los Priscos were intimately connected to all these players and their crimes. They were Escobar's personal hit squad, carrying out most of his dangerous missions with ruthless efficiency. It's clear that the cartel trusted Los Priscos enough to make them do the dirty deeds. But you'll be shocked to find out what they had to go through in order to earn that trust. Once these men were recruited, they were taken to remote training camps where they underwent intense physical and psychological training. The goal was to turn them into ruthless, cold-blooded killers who would carry out the cartel's orders without hesitation. The members of Los Priscos were required to follow strict rules and codes of conduct. Any violation of these codes would result in severe punishment or even a gruesome death. They were expected to be completely loyal to the cartel, 
and were forbidden from having any personal relationships that could compromise their work. Now, every gang has to have a main man, right? So, who was in charge here? The leader of the group, Ricardo, was widely known for his brutality and quick temper. He was the one who gave orders for the assassinations, and the other members of Los Priscos followed his lead. The murders committed by Los Priscos were some of the most heinous and barbaric crimes ever seen in Colombia. These were not just cold-blooded killings, but savage acts of brutality sending shivers down the spines of even the most hardened criminals. For instance, the group was responsible for the assassination of Rodrigo Lara Bonilla, a prominent politician who had been a vocal opponent of the Medellin cartel. Bonilla was gunned down in broad daylight on a busy street in Bogota, his body riddled with bullets. But that was just the beginning. Los Priscos were also responsible for the murder of more than 300 police officers, judges, journalists, and other public officials who dared to stand up to the cartel's power. They were involved in the bombing of an Avianca commercial airliner in 1989, killing all 107 passengers and crew members on board. And as you know by now, they also carried out the assassination of a presidential candidate, Luis Carlos Galan, in 1989. But perhaps their most infamous act was the killing of not one, not two, but three Colombian presidential candidates in 1990, causing shockwaves around the world. These killings were seen as an attack on democracy itself, and Los Priscos quickly became the most wanted men in Colombia. Their methods were nothing short of brutal. They would often use chainsaws, machetes, and other gruesome tools to carry out their crimes, leaving behind a trail of blood with no further evidence. It's difficult to even imagine the level of depravity that these hitmen were capable of. What's even more disturbing is the fact that the group operated with impunity for years, with law enforcement unable to stop them. It was only after the death of Pablo Escobar and the dismantling of the Medellin cartel that some of the members of Los Priscos were brought to justice. The Notorious Hit Squad of the Medellin Cartel How would it feel to be in the personal hit squad of one of the most notorious drug lords in history? And what kind of twisted world must exist where murder and corruption is just another day at the office? Los Priscos were not just hired killers. They were a crucial part of the Medellin Cartel's power structure. Los Priscos played a significant role in the cartel's drug trafficking operations, transporting cocaine and other illicit substances across international borders. They also helped launder the cartel's vast wealth, working in tandem with corrupt bankers and businessmen to conceal their illegal profits. Not only that, they were also responsible for transporting tons of cocaine into the US, Europe, and other parts of the world using a variety of methods. Take a look at this. Hidden compartments in vehicles, boats, and even planes. Can you believe it? They would stop at nothing to get the job done, even if it meant risking their own lives or the lives of innocent people. You see, working for Pablo Escobar meant putting yourself last. Money laundering was also a major part of their activities. They would set up illegal fronts and shell corporations to disguise their source of illegal profits, often using legitimate businesses as a cover. They were masters of deception, able to hide vast amounts of money, making it appear as if it had been earned through legitimate means. But their involvement in the cartel's activities didn't stop there. Los Priscos were also responsible for collecting debts from rival drug gangs and anyone else who owed money to the cartel. And if that sounds impressive to you, it shouldn't. There's nothing pretty about Los Priscos. Because when you consider how they mistreat their victims, it leaves a bitter taste in your mouth. They would use intimidation tactics, such as kidnapping and torture, to get what they wanted. And Los Priscos didn't flinch at the idea of targeting family members just to reach their victim. It was all part of their twisted game. And people quickly learned that these guys were not to be trifled with. 
the level of corruption and criminality within the Medellin cartel was truly staggering. What happened to Los Briscos? Their ruthless tactics were bound to catch up with them, and they did. Karma came in the form of a violent and bloody showdown. But was justice truly served? Or was it just a momentary victory in the ongoing war against organized crime? In 1990, Los Briscos took a greater role within the cartel after the deaths of several key figures, including Pablo Escobar's cousin. But just when things were heating up, Armando Prisco, one of the leaders, had a close brush with death. He was shot in the head during a confrontation with authorities, but miraculously survived. However, one of Armando's own men thought he was dead and spent millions of Colombian pesos meant for his boss. When Armando unexpectedly recovered, his guy had to answer for the missing money. Because as you might have guessed, failure to do so would result in a bloodbath. To avoid punishment, he collaborated with the authorities and gave up the location of Armando's brother, Ricardo. On a fateful day in January 1991, authorities found out that he was hiding in a luxurious house in the Conquistadores neighborhood of Medellin. The police quickly mobilized an elite force of 250 officers to carry out an assault on the property. And make no mistake, the stakes were high. Ricardo was considered the ninth most important man within the Medellin cartel structure at the time. The operation began just after midnight, and the Prisco brothers put up a fierce resistance. As the officers stormed the building, shots were fired from the inside, and the gang members attempted to flee. The police had to blow up the locks on the doors to gain entry, and a violent gun battle ensued. In the chaos, David Ricardo was hit by 10 bullets and killed on the spot. Now you'd think this is where the story ends, but you're wrong. Armando Prisco, who was hiding out on a nearby farm, was also targeted by the authorities. A gunfight ensued and Armando was killed. But what's interesting is that Armando Prisco was, according to a later report, already paralyzed from his previous brush with death. So it appeared that the police made a spur-of-the-moment decision to mete out the ultimate punishment for him. Death. With the death of the brothers, Los Priscos were effectively dismantled, but not before they were wanted for ordering the murder of 50 police officers and nine other murders. It's a wild and tragic tale of power, betrayal, and violence. Los Briscos were just one small part of a much larger and more complex story. Their story is a reminder of the dangers of organized crime and the devastating impact it can have on individuals, communities, and entire countries.